In this video, we are going to talk about basic, simple and primitive data types. It defines the type of data stored in memory location. It determines how much memory should be allocated for a variable. Basically, we are talking about the data structures here. So, various type of data such as what are all the data types that you have? Integer constant and floating point constant character constant etc can be stored in memory location during execution of program. The data types are classified mainly into two groups. One is primitive data types and the other one is derived data types. What is primitive data types? The data types that can be manipulated by machine instructions are called primitive data type. The data type that can be manipulated by machine instruction are called primitive data types. Then they serve as a basic building blocks for complex data types. The various type, uh, types of data types are we have int, char, float and double. If you are considering in int, using int keyword, the programmer can inform the compiler that the data associated with this keyword should be treated as an integer. The size of the int should can be of uh, two, two bytes or four or eight bytes and is a machine dependent. The different sizes of uh, integer data type is short int, int and long int. To note that we know the size to know the size of the data type the user or the use the operator or operator size of. The operator tells us what is the exact size of an integer data type. Suppose if I use size of short int is less than or equal to size of int is less than or equal to size of long int. So the size and range of the integer varies from machine to machine and compiler to compiler as shown below. So that is if you have an n-bit machine, what is the type and size and the range of unsigned int that is 0 to 2 to the power of n minus 1, this is syntax. And range of signed int will be minus 2 to the power of n minus 1, 2 plus 2 to the power of n minus 1, minus 1. Suppose if you are considering a 16-bit machine, what is the short type and the type and size? The type is short type int and then the size is 2 bytes. So, you apply that uh, 2 to the power of 16 bits. So, n is equal to 16. So, 2 to the power of 16 minus 1. So, that is for unsigned int. For the signed int, it ranges from minus 2 to the power of n minus 1. So, that means n is equal to 16. So, minus 2 to the power of 15, 2. Plus 2 to the power of 15 minus 1. Similarly, for int of 2 bytes, two to the, 0 to 2 to the power of 16 minus 1 which will be minus 2 to the power of 15, that is uh, signed int, which is 2 to the power of 15, 2 plus 2 to the power of 15 minus 1. So, what will going to be the range of unsigned int, that is 0 to 6 double 5 3 5, and the range of signed int will going to be minus 2, 3 2 7 6 8 2 plus 3 2 6 7 6, or 3 2 7 6 7. So, then we have the long int, which is 4 bytes, so that means it will be 2 to the power of 32 minus 1. Similarly, for n minus 1, n is equal to if you apply for uh, uh, 32 bit. So 32 bytes. So it will be minus 2 to the power of uh, 31. 2 plus 2 to the power of 32 minus 1. So the long int will go to have 4 bytes of each. Then that is ranges from 0 to 429, 496, 672, 95. Then here on the signed side, which will be minus 214, 748, 364, 82, plus 214, 748, 364, 7. So that is the range which is going to be considered for long int. So, what are the advantages? The advantages is integer constants or exact quantities. They are used for counting and indexing because of the non-existence of the decimal point 
in the integer. What are the disadvantages? Higher range numbers cannot be represented and even the numbers with fractional part cannot be represented and stored. And what is the float? The float is the, prog the programmer can inform the compiler that the data associated with this keyword should be treated as a floating point number. The size of float and range of float range varies from mission to mission as shown below. So what is the n-bit mission and the size of int and range of int. Suppose if you are considering 16-bit mission, what is the size of float? It would be 4. So range of float is plus 3.4 into e to the power of minus 38 to 3.4 into e to the power of 38. Similarly for 32-bit mission, 8 bytes. Again it is the float. So the range is 1.7 into e to the power of minus 308 to 1.7 into e to the power of that is 10 to the power of 308. So what are the advantages of this? The numbers with fractional parts or decimal part cannot be stored. That is not there because of integer. So what is an integer? Integer is without decimal point is called integer. The higher precision and range when compared to the integers. So what are the disadvantages? So here, since they are not exact quantities, they are not used for counting and or indexing. And the floating point numbers occupy more than 4 bytes, cannot be represented. Precision of more than 6 bits, digits after the decimal point is not possible. Floating point numbers are represented approximately by most computers. So double, the programmer can inform the compiler that the data associated with this keyword should be treated as a long floating point number. The size and range of uh, double varies from mission to mission as shown below. So what is the n-bit mission and the size of float and the range of float. Suppose if it is a 16-bit mission, the size of float is 88 bytes. Similarly for the range of float which is 1.7 into 10 to the power of minus 308 to 1.7 into 10 to the power of 308. Suppose if you are using the 16-bit mission, then the size of float is 16 bytes and the range is 3.4 to 1.1 into 10 to the power of 4932. Uh, so what are the advantages? Higher precision range when compared to the floating point numbers and uh, then the chart character cancelled. It is used for defining the single character or a sequence of characters which becomes the string. The programmer can inform the compiler that the data associated with this keyword should be treated as one character or x character. Each character stored in the memory is associated with the unique value called ASCII value. Suppose if you are considering an n-bit mission and having the size of char and the range of unsigned integer or unsigned char which is 0 to 2 to the power of n minus 1 and range of signed char will be minus 2 to the power of n minus 1 to plus 2 to the power of n minus 1. Suppose if it is 16 or 32 bit mission, the size of character is 1 byte. So apply this, so it will go to be 0 to 2 to the power of 8 minus 1 that will be equal to minus 2 to the power of 7 to plus 2 to the power of 7 minus 1. Or you can say 0 to 255 or minus 128 to 127. So then what is the y? It's an empty data type. Since no value is associated with this data type, it does not occupy any memory or any space in the memory location. That is the main function of y data type. It is the empty data type. This keyword is not associated with any variable except pointers. It is normally used in functions to indicate that the function does not return any value because the void is the one which will not going to return back to the function. So that is the reason why it has been used void. Variables. A variable is the name given to a memory location when the data can be stored. Where the data can be stored. Using the variable name, the data can be stored in memory location and can be accessed or manipulated very easily. And then the rules for defining a variable. The first character in the variable should be a letter. 
so that means a to z or small a to z or an underscore if you want to give the space and the first character can be followed by any number of letters or digits which is from 0 to 9 or underscores. The no extra symbols are allowed other than letters, digits and underscore. The length of an identifier can be of uh, can be up to a maximum of uh, 31 characters for external names such as function names and global variables that can be stored between source files. The C keyword should not be used to the variable name. For example, for, do, while, etc. cannot be used because as that has been declared as the uh, do uh, because it is the keywords of the uh, program. Then the declaring and defining a variable. How do you declare and define the variable? Giving a name to a memory location is called declaring a variable. So you need to give a name for the memory location. So that is the reason why we have the uh, declaring the variable name. Declaration of a variable will not reserve the space in the memory. So that means once you declare the variable name, that doesn't mean that it should occupy the memory. So it will not reserve the memory in space. Reserving the required memory space to store the data using the declaring or the declared variable is called defining a variable. What are the syntax? The syntax is type v1 to vn within semicolons. So for example, if you are considering abc as an integer, so I am declaring the variable abc as an integer variable and then ptr, p, t, r, si. So these are all the functions, which is the float function or the float variable. So where v1 to v, vn will be variable names and then the type is type of variable v1 to vn. The type of variables may be int or maybe a float or maybe a character or maybe a double etc. So assuming that uh, for a 16-bit mission, the compiler results always two bytes for an integer. So the point should be remembered during the declaration as shown below. All variables of the same data type can be declared using a single statement in a line. So that means if you are using the variable names as a, b and c, all these variables having the same data type, so that means it is in int, then you declare all those things in a single line. So int, give one space and say a, comma b, comma c, which is and close the semicolon. All the variables of the same data type can be defined separately using multiple statements in multiple lines. Instead of telling that int a comma b comma c and semicolon. So what we can do is int a semicolon for better readability that's what we are talking about. int a semicolon, int b semicolon and int c semicolon. So this is how the programming uh, uh, lines have been declared. So you can declare all the variables in a single line of same data type. So then we can go for either this way or this way. The multiple declarations are allowed in the same line whenever each declaration statement ends with a semicolon. So, so that means int a semicolon then give some space and float b semicolon then char c semicolon and double d semicolon. So where int is the integer variable, float is nothing but the floating point variable, then char is the char character variable or character variable and double is the long floating points variable. So the way, number four, the variables with different data types can be defined in different lines. So what does it mean? Suppose I want to say int, integer, a is an integer, b is a float, then c is a character and four is a d is the double. Then each variable can be declared on their own different lines. So int a colon a comma b comma c semicolon. This the compiler reserves two bytes of memory space for each of the variables. That means int a will going to have uh, two variable uh, two uh, two bytes. Similarly b and c. This is because all the variables c b c are declared as an integer variables 
using the keyword int and the size of the integer is 2 bytes. The memory locations are not initialized and hence they contain garbage values. So the memory locations has to be initialized first otherwise you are going to have the garbage value in the memory location. So that means if you don't have any assigned number then A will going to have garbage value. So question mark and question mark. Similarly B, C and so this is how. When we are not able to declare the variable, in that case, it will going to have this type. What is the variable initialization? So that we will going to continue in our next video. Thank you.